Yo, Elliot, my question is, how can I get back on my purpose as a king? Here's what I'm up against. I recently moved to Bali for a few reasons. I had a client who lived there. We were doing work together every day. I wanted to finally live on my own with no roommate so I could focus on copywriting. I wanted to go full monk mode, focusing on my craft. And here's what the move to Bali actually turned into. <laughs> the client ended up being a nightmare to work with. Imagine hiring a copywriter, then assigning him to all the KT calls, LOL. He did not have value. He did not value my expertise. So I left that situation and has left a sour taste in my mouth since. I felt my confidence has taken a blow since. I don't really understand what that means. Imagine hiring a copywriter, then assigning him all the KT calls. Uh, but anyway, so it didn't work out with the client. I've been more distracted than ever watching YouTube videos half the day. I feel more disconnected from my purpose, my clients, my family, and my friends than ever. And now I only make $650 a month compared to $15,000 last month. I can't seem to get anything done. I don't talk to anyone anymore. I'm alone. I have this weird throat infection as I type this, and I've never felt more spiritually lost than ever before. I'm having a hard time sourcing my purpose. Maybe I got what I asked for with monk mode. <laughs> yeah, maybe you did. My question is, what should I do to reconnect with my purpose as king? I thought about just leaving Bali and going back home, but that doesn't feel right either. I purchased the villa I have up front until October 1st, but I'm planning on leaving in September. So you're still going to be there for a while. You know, I think you answered that question quite well yourself. Interestingly enough, I agree with you. I think you got what you asked for with regard to monk mode. And here's the thing, bro. <laughs> a lot of times, man, I say 90% of the times we, we try to, we play up in our imagination, how amazing things are going to be when some, before we go somewhere, if you read the book, he by Robert Johnson, I've referred to it quite a bit in this program, he describes the effeminate state of two young boys who were getting ready for a camping trip. And for a month, they were all giddy. They were excited. They were talking about what's going to happen when they get there, so on and so forth. He was talking about moods and why men get trapped in moods. And so he, he was like, they were in it. They were in an excited mood. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Just like you, right? I'm going to do monk mode. It's going to be great. I'm going to have no roommates. I'm going to focus on copywriting. It's going to be amazing, right? And so these kids were doing the same thing. They were going on a camp trip. They were getting all excited and shit. <laughs> and then they go on the camp trip and it's hard. They're out in the wilderness and they have nothing. They have to work. It's raining and it's uncomfortable. And instead of embracing what is, they resist it and they end up going home early, just like you. So it's two things, but mainly one. This is the first, this, first of all, first I'm gonna give you a perspective. You, I'm gonna mirror your perspective for you. I show you what you did, <laughs> I think you already get it. But then I'll talk to you a little bit about what, you, what can come on this. You set yourself up for a fall by having too much of a grandiose inflated imagination about what this is going to be. And you allowed yourself to get just like the word inflated means filled up, swollen up. And you could just imagine being filled up with like helium. That's the perfect way to imagine it. You put your mouth on the helium, you know, the tank and you blew yourself up. You, <laughs> you blowing smoke up your own ass. <laughs> So you took all that helium and you got high. You were filled up and you were floating, right? But it was not based in any reality whatsoever. And in a way, God allows us to do that for a number of reasons. I'll talk about why in a moment. But it's also so that you can gain wisdom and you won't, you'll stop doing this dumb stuff. 
You filled yourself up. You got, you ever hear the word gassed? When I was, in, when I was young in, in the nineties, they used to say, oh, he gassed you. You got gassed. You gassed yourself. <laughs> you gassed yourself. You got gassed. <laughs> you got gassed up and you, 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 uh, you got popped. Your bubble got burst. Your bubble got burst. But the thing is, I like your intention. It was the way you went about it by gassing yourself up and you were full of your imagination. Maybe you do need to go full monk mode, but it wasn't what you thought it was gonna be. You thought this monk mode was gonna be fun, but there's nothing about being a monk that's fun. Did you know that? Did you watch my video on the three requirements of monk mode? I have a video on monk mode and Monk mode is about pure submission. So right now you're getting the absolute best monk mode you need because you are in pure submission to the will of God. He, he wanted you, he wanted to see you. He wanted to allow you to fill yourself up and then burst your bubble and let you land in this hard spot so that you can actually fulfill your intention and his attention for you to truly experience the submission, the humility, the, the, the humiliation of real monk mode. Monks take vows. They take a vow of chastity. That means no indulgence. Chastity means I'm not going to have any pleasures. A, a vow of chastity. Now, when you decided in your mind I was going to go monk mode, you have to understand that, that was, you were taking a vow of chastity, that means no pleasure. Guess what you having right now? No pleasure, no pleasure. You take a vow of poverty when you become a monk. This is all legit. If you wanna be a, like a, a Franciscan friar or something like that, a real monk, this is what you do. You take a vow of poverty, look at you. You went from 15,000 to 600. You're getting monk mode. So you have no pleasure, you have no money, and you take a vow of obedience. That means I don't live by my own will anymore. Right now, your will is subverted by your circumstances. You're not in control of your life right now and you don't like it. You're getting sick, you're feeling lonely, you feel lost. Here's what I would invite you to do. Stay there and suffer, but you need guidance. You need help. You can't do it yourself. Number one, begin praying. Begin praying. Begin talking to God like you're talking to a friend. Begin by saying, Lord, I know you're here with me. You're never left me. You're watching me. You know all my thoughts. You know what's best for me. You know what is right for me. And, and you are always leading me in the right direction. I submit, my, I submit myself fully to your will, Lord. I have no will of my own. My greatest desire is to do that which you desire for me. Come, Holy Spirit, guide me in this day. Let me be in full submission to the will of God. A prayer, something like that. Read up, read on, read prayers of submission. Pray this prayer into your hands by Charles de Foucault. Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you may do, I thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me and in all your creatures. I wish no more than this. O oh Lord, into your hands I commend my soul. I offer it to you with all the love of my heart, for I love you. Lord, and so need to give myself, to surrender myself into your hands without reserve and with boundless confidence, for you are my father. Pray that prayer. I'll put this over here so you can, 
You can even take a screenshot of that. Take a sc screenshot of that. Pray that prayer. Pray. And then, without overwhelming yourself, read. And I'm going to... I'm going to give you one book. I think if you read this one book and just absorb this one book, you have a couple months left there. You read this one book five times. While you absorb, the, absorb what this book is and be everything in this book. Let's call, here it is, Spiritual Combat, a treatise on peace of the soul. Dear Christian soul, if you seek to reach the loftiest peak of perfection and to unite yourself so intimately with God that you become one in spirit with him, you must first know the true nature and perfection of spirituality in order to succeed in the most sublime undertaking that can be expressed or imagined. Probably one of the most important books ever written on spiritual combat. And you're in the middle of spiritual combat. You're in the middle of spiritual combat. Haas has some good ideas for you too. Haas says prolonged fasting. This might be a good place for you to fast too. That's what monks do. Monks fast. So don't, don't play make-believe monk. Don't play fake monk, right? Dressing up monk, right? What do, you, what do they call it when you're... Um, you, <laughs> they got this funny term where like, you're a fake player in the game, you know, non-something non player, NPC, or you're, there's another term, where you're like a fake, you're like a fake in the game. You're like LARP, thank you. <laughs> I knew somebody would figure it out. Live action, real player. Thank you, Lucas. <laughs> you LARPing. <laughs> Stop LARPing, bro. You LARPing like a, like a monk. You be a real monk. That's where you are right now. Yep. You, know, you gotta, you gotta, uh, you gotta see this as a grace from God. This is God giving you an opportunity, and you could fail this by whining, complaining, feeling bad for yourself, giving up, and going home. That I don't think that's God's will for you. I think all the suffering you're going through is God's will for you because He's testing your resolve. He's testing your strength. He's testing to see if you're serious. Right. A lot of times we think we want something and God is like, are you sure you want that? I don't think you know what you're asking for, but if you really want it, I'm going to give it to you. And he gives it to us. And one of two things could happen. We could rise to the occasion and open up the doors to grace, but it's going to be hard. Right. You got, because it's out, you're stretching, you're, you're, out, you're stretching outside of your comfort zone. Or you fail and not to say that you'll never get a chance. You always will. You'll always get another chance, but you failed and you have to go home and you have to, you, you have to resolve that. You have to realize, man, I did, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I had the chance and I failed because I was feeling sad about myself. Don't, I mean, don't beat yourself up. I've done that. You know how many times I've failed? I look at myself so many times I'm like, damn, I wasted a whole lot of times failing. I wasted years in failure, but sometimes those failures are important so that you have the resolve when, it, when, the, when the opportunity is given to you again. So you can say, oh, I see, because life is cyclical. You're going to get this chance again, but it's just going to take longer, right? Might as, well, might as well nail it now. But if you fail, there's no big deal. You're going to get this, you're going to get this chance again. And hopefully you remember Oh, I remember when I failed that time. God gave me the opportunity to actually overcome my inner beta male. I had a chance to overcome my effeminacy and I just felt bad for myself. I was being a pussy. This time I'm not gonna be a pussy. I'm gonna be tough. But you can make that choice now. You really do have the opportunity. I think you can do it. I think you should do it. But the whole thing is, don't think it's going to feel good. It's going to suck. But you got to embrace the suck. 
that's where the virtue comes from embracing the suck be okay being bored get comfortable being uncomfortable all that kind of stuff and i think you'll be all right dude be broke i'm looking at the dollar signs on the screen be broke be alone and be obedient done <laughs>